We bout to party. Unrestricted. Got the house now. We gon' turn it up. Up, bring the house down. Got that big space pump and make them bounce now. Flossing like they bossing and the freaks are coming out now. Hello and welcome to AEW Unrestricted, the official podcast of All Elite Wrestling, starring your co-hosts, Aubrey Edwards and Will Washington. How are you doing, Will? I'm great. We are co-hosts. That's the thing we are. We are co-hosts. We, that is yes. the thing we are. So I, I want to give a shout out to a little, a little group backstage at AEW because with, with all of the pay-per-view chaos, we, we'd been traveling, changing time zones more than we had been, being on planes for nine, 10 hours. It's really hard to follow off your routine. Going to the gym is super important for me. So I wanted to give a shout out to what we call the Swole Patrol, which is run by Doc Sampson. And every Wednesday morning, despite not wanting to go, I get a text that says what time we're meeting in the lobby. And we go to the gym and we work out. And I just wanted to give a shout out. We got Doc Sampson. I've been going with, uh, with Boulder. I've been going with Amanda Huber. Maybe some other people. End up running into Billy Gunn. There's no other way to be more motivated for a show day than working out with people who are professional athletes. So just shout out to all of them. Oh yeah, absolutely. That is uh, that is quite a crew of jacked individuals, and so very jacked. No, and I, I love every single one of them. So uh, I, I got to get back in. I have not mm-hmm. been. I actually fell completely off my workout routine. Part of it was by design. Pretty much every day that I'm not on the road, I meet with my personal trainer, and mm-hmm. uh, I looked at my August schedule, and I was like, I'm barely even going to be at home. Yeah, and I barely was through, through the entire month of August, and I was like, you know, with Wembley, I'm going to be gone an entire week, and so I was like, let's let's hit pause till about mid September, which is where we're at. It is time to get back in, get back in the gym, because yeah, I, I realized it's just tough, like just being on the road as much as we were. And for me, I, I have this weird preference for my home gym. I have this uh, affinity for my uh, for my personal trainer. Shout out Corey, he's great. Um, dude's paid fitness, but yeah, so it's you know we do our thing. But uh, I no, you guys are. I, I see you guys in the mornings. It's so great, and uh, and I love it. Speaking of jacked, I, I have to preface this interview uh, by saying that this is going to be an insane one. It's going to be a wild one. Oh. But I think this is an episode of AEW Unrestricted that will go down in the history books. Who do we have here, Aubrey Edwards? Oh, buddy, I am excited for our guest today. A little uh, little blast from the past. I clearly did not wear enough bright colors. I did not wear my hair in a side ponytail, and I did not wear badass sunglasses. Uh, I am not prepared for how awesome this podcast is about to be. Welcome, Turbo Floyd and Truth Magnum, the Outrunners. Yes, Aubrey Edwards, you're talking to the hustle and the muscle, the Bruce Lee's of the jet skis, the youngest men alive, Truth Magnum, Turbo Floyd, coming at you worldwide and nowhere else. Tell them, Turf. <laughs> you said it all, man, a big mouthful, but Aubrey, let me be the first to thank you for having Truth Magnum. And Turbo Floyd on the show today. There's just going to be a lot of flexing. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, by the way, that I am so glad that the infectiousness of the Outrunners has finally hit the AEW fan base as it has the last few weeks. Because, yes. you know, as, as somebody in the office, you guys have been popping us for a long time. Uh, th- there's always those moments where we're sitting around thinking like, okay, what is something that we can get the Outrunners to do this week? And we <laughs> notice with each passing week, the responses from the fans had been getting louder and louder and louder, which was making that feeling for us feel more justified. And all of a sudden now, it just feels like you guys are running the world. That reaction you guys got back in uh, what what city were we Lexington. literally just in? Lexington. 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 And Lexington. That- Lexington. Oh, <laughs> there it is. Uh, that reaction in Lexington told me everything I needed to know. And uh, I was just so happy to hear that. Could you guys feel it in your veins, the energy, the electricity when that music hit? Buzz <laughs> it. <laughs> Let me ask you a real quick question, though. You said you were in creative. Is that true? Yes. <laughs> Were you the one that was booking us in handicap matches, knowing that that was the Outrunner's only weakness? No, Answer not truth. at all. We're, we're going to get to the bottom of it. 
Yeah, we'll get. To uh, I, I I will say that, and I say this consistently. There is a creative process. There is a creative team. But AEW only has one Booker. That's right. What are you trying to say? Is it you, Aubrey? No, it's definitely <laughs> not me. It's Tony Khan. Right. <laughs> then we will have no quarrels today. <laughs> Coral free zone. <laughs> no quarrel. I also like for for those that aren't watching the video version, just the seriousness of the moment increases the moment the sunglasses come off. You know, I'm dead serious when they come off. I'm a very serious guy at all times. So is Truth Magnum this way. But when they come off, you know it's dead serious. I have another quick question. I am to uh, understand this is unrestricted. We won't be restricted at all. Correct. This is our very first unrestricted podcast. We normally do restricted podcasts for age Ooh. reasons. Yes. For age reasons, because you guys are the, the youngest men alive. That's correct. So they say. So they say. Oh, buddy. <laughs> what we say. <laughs> I do want to ask about that uh, the the tag team casino gauntlet in uh, in Lexington again. You know, it was for a shot at at facing the Young Bucks again. You know, the your music hits. There's this massive response from the audience. Everybody is there for the Outrunners. Uh, what was that experience like? Uh, how how did that moment feel? I looked the truth dead in his eyes as we were coming down the ramp. He looked me dead in my eyes. We pumped our guns. We high fived. We said, "Just another day in the office." And that was it. <laughs> when, we, when we hit the ring, we were back to back, surrounded by everybody that just wanted those ti that title shot as much as we do, but not quite as much. And I said, "Turb, are you ready? Are you ready?" He said, "Hell oh, yeah!" You know what I said, Truth? What'd you say to him? Truth? What'd I say? He said, "Oh hell yeah!" <laughs> Buck knuckles, and the rest was history. I only said hell. I knew we would be unrestricted. That's right. I I was honestly very sad to see you guys like not win that title shot. But it's also one of those moments where I know that this is the first of many. Like clearly I'm looking at future champions here. I don't think there's anyone who's actually strong enough to hold the gold that is the AEW tag team championship belts. Uh you guys might be the only ones. Uh speaking of strong, I do want to ask about your uh workout montages. And oh, yeah. what, what's sort of the creative process of those? Do we just catch you in your element? Are there, uh, a, do you have like a lighting team that follows you, a camera crew? How does this work? Anytime we walk into the gym, people just pop their phones on. They just start recording. They're like, who are these two big muscle bound? And there's no lighting tricks. That's just tons of sports gloss, all natural. All natural sports, sports gloss. gloss once we get rolling. You might call it sweat. We call it sports gloss. But all of that, all of those clips, it's all fan footage. They send them to us. We clip them together. That's all fan footage. So you're seeing the raw deal. Nothing edited. No, it's never. We would never edit anything. That's not the outrunner way. That's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> this I'm is going to be the greatest <laughs> interview of all time. I do have to ask, though. Youngest men alive. How old are both of you? Old enough. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, I know this is unrestricted, but we clearly said no age questions on this program before you. I remember specifically requesting that. You wouldn't ask my mother her age. I wouldn't. You wouldn't ask a beautiful lady what her age is, and you don't ask the outrunners either. You don't ask the beautiful men either. I think Will knows the age of his wife, though. Don't you dare say it, Will. Don't say it, Will. She's 35. Just keep your mouth shut for the sake of everyone here. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Damn it, it's gotten out. <laughs> well, either way, I, like I said, the youngest men alive, you guys are, are, have completely taken the world by storm. And the fact that these videos are coming in, the fact that fans are uh, placing you guys where they see you, the fact that you guys uh, represent a, a an era of professional wrestling and an era of tag team wrestling that is i think still desired by the fan base not just the AEW fans but wrestling fans in general i think to me is a really cool thing and i think seeing the the growth uh amongst the fan base to me is is just incredible but you know it took a while for you guys to find that victory um matter of fact your first AEW TV victory only occurred like a week ago, yes. in which we saw you guys on Collision uh, get your first AEW TV victory uh, against Davey Bang and August Matthews. Let, let, let's talk about this. Uh, 
the strategy behind what it took to finally get a victory, to finally make, to find the combination of uh, the energy that is the Outrunners. What was the strategy in finally getting that victory? Turbo Floyd and I always come in there with a game plan. We saw those two across the ring. I told Turbo, let's load up the rocket ship because we're going all the way. Today's the day. And one thing led to another, and we hit the most devastating tag team move in wrestling today. What's it called, Turbo? Oh, we like to call it Total Recall. Right. The next thing you know, the roof blew off whatever arena that was in Chicago. Now arena. And the Outrunners started the undefeated streak that's sweeping the nation. That's right. On commentary, Nigel McGinnis said that instead of 10,000 steps per day, you guys do 10,000 high fives. Is that true? At least. Yes. Bare minimum. Bare minimum. I would never take a step that I don't have to. So when Truth and I meet up, we hit 10,000 of them a day just to make sure we'll never get rusty when I reach to my partner's hand and we make that tag. Isn't that right, buddy? Nobody actually tags better than the Outrunners. Name a tag. We never tag. Name a tag. Mm. Uh, I mean, the the Young Young Bucks Bucks. are currently champions, yeah. They don't tag better than us. They don't tag any better than us. Oh, you're talking about the physical nature of tagging. The physical nature of touching hands. That's what it's all about. Uh, I don't know. FTR has had it. They've got a pretty good tag. They're pretty good about it. Mm, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, What about Private Party? I feel like they tag. I've seen them whip once or twice. I've seen them tag, but they don't tag like the Outrunners. Yeah. I don't know though, because you you have you seen uh, Isaiah Cassidy and his handshake with uh, with cheesecake? Like you know, they clearly have some great eye hand coordination. I would never shake hands with a piece of food, and that's just the way. It <laughs> that is true. I can't argue with that logic, and neither can you. That's that's. I mean, that's sound logic. If there's anything we've learned on this podcast, it's not the, to shake hands with food. If you shake hands with cheesecake that's an absolute mess that you're gonna have to go to the bathroom which is, involves walking boo and i can't tag truth's hand with a handful of cheesecake that's ridiculous this is common sense <laughs> common sense is not something i figured we'd discuss on this podcast but here we are oh my god we'll talk about it this is this is phenomenal we've we've got more to talk about with the outrunners coming up here on AEW unrestricted AEW Unrestricted, we have Aubrey and Will talking to the most jacked, the tannest, the youngest, and the most vascular tag team in all of wrestling, the Outrunners. I'm actually curious, how did you guys meet and become a team? That's a funny story and one that I love to leave to Turbo because he knows how to tell it. (laughs) It was actually a really dark day, and I'll go ahead and pop these off for this. Because you don't need sunglasses when it's dark. And I'll put them right back on. (laughs) (laughs) This is very serious, please. Please. Can we have a little uh, show of respect, please? Sorry. Yes. You're just a young boy. And I had to go to the hospital. It's a very serious condition. We didn't know what was going on with me. Couldn't figure it out. Doctors had no idea what the heck was going on. So... I told the doctor, give it to me straight. What is it? She said, it's incurable. I said, that doesn't sound great. (laughs) Just give it to me straight, doc. She said, turbo, I'm sorry to do this to you, but you've been diagnosed with OCD. I said, what the H-E double hell is OCD? And she said, turbo, you're one cool dude. And I said, no way. Me? This guy. She said, yeah, you. But there's still hope. There's still a chance that you might be able to make it through this because right next door is another guy who's been diagnosed with OCD. I'm going to bring him in right now. And there he was. She said, here he is, Truth Magnum. Both of you have OCD and shit clicked for that day. She's like, oh, my God, I've discovered it. You boys got it. Two CD, two cool and the only thing I can say in that moment was Turbo Floyd, you son of a bitch. Yes! <laughs> anyway, 
We met in hospital. Oh, man. Man, who who would have thought we'd have this amazing doctor to thank for diagnosing you both independently and combining you both together? Oh, how wonderful. Uh, Miss Dr. Miss, uh, Miss Dr. Runner, and that was the day it clicked. We're out of here. The medical outrunners. The outrunners. That's right. The medical there we go. We got it. So uh, let, let's talk about staying tan, staying jacked. Walk us through a typical non-wrestling day in the life of the Outrunners. Well, Will Washington, to be the man, you got to stay tan. So every day we start our tanning regimen, Miami Beach. We leave the Outrunner compound deep beneath the sands. We hit the beach. Yes. We hit our five-mile run up and down the beach, dodging mm -hmm. fans, dodging bikini babes. And we get nice and greased up Sick. after that for our working. And tell them about our workouts, Terry. I don't think they're ready. Mm -mm. <sighs> I don't think you're ready. For shoulders, we got standing shoulder press. For biceps, we got standing bicep curls. And for legs, we got standing bicep curls and standing shoulder press because it works legs too, baby. Ooh. Other than that, it's 18 hours of jet skiing in the sun to get this hot, bright tan. Yeah. 18 hours a day. So it's all natural. All natch. Absolutely. Is there any other way to do it? Well, I mean, no. Everyone knows the best tan is really just being outside and on the beach. That's that's how you get the best tan. That's uh, do you guys have a preferred SPF or do you go, do you raw dog it? Never heard of SPF, but I have heard of Rod Hogan. <laughs> Explain both to me, please. <laughs> Explain both to me, please. Um, so an SPF is a, a level of protection from the sun's rays. Never. And uh, yep. raw dogging it is when something is not cooked. Uh, like if you're eating broccoli and it's not steamed. Huh. I would never steam broccoli. Although, uh, I recently learned while listening to NPR the other day that uh, there does become a diminishing return on SPF. Really? So if you go too high on SPF, at some point, uh, it, it actually is becoming less effective. Uh, there is a sweet spot with SPF. So if you decide to one day take care of your skin, um, just know that you don't have to go too far with it. Okay. So if I Google raw dogging, it's going to bring up broccoli? Um, I, I would recommend maybe, if you do, do it in the, do it at home. Don't do it at work. Give me one sec. Don't do it on no your phone in public. No public, no public Googling. I'm deaf. No public Googling of raw dogging. <laughs> I only have okay. so many Googles left this month. <laughs> How many you got left? I got four. Four? So, Burn through the Googles. Make them count. Yeah, make them count. Burn through them. I'm I'm curious because uh, you guys are always so well dressed for every occasion, whether it's in the gym, on the beach, or in the wrestling ring. Uh, where does your fashion sense come from? What inspires it? I guess I would say the need to look absolutely fantastic inspires me. This is my this is my typical leisure suit wear. This is my evening wear. Wow! Yeah, check it out. Look at that chest. <laughs> yeah, I normally don't even wear a shirt, so. That's golden. It's kind of a special occasion. This is really formal wear, That's I right. would say, for the unrestricted podcast. I think that zipper is a little high for unrestricted, just personally. You know. There we go. There we go. Unrestrict that zipper, man. There, there it go. is. There you go. You are so unrestricted. You got to show off the vascularity at all times. I think that's one of the main goals. I'm trying to show you a deltoid there. Turbo's got his on, on display already. Yeah, what is it? Softball season? <laughs> oh, my God. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. That's just a taste. That was a little restricted. Maybe I'll unrestrict it later. I don't know. You tell me. No. Oh, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so after meeting the doctor in the hospital and being combined into two cool dudes, the, the outrunners, the youngest men alive, all this, you guys actually went on to win a couple championships. You were the uh, one-time OVW tag team champions in 2022. And also in 2022, you were the Nightmare Cup tournament winners. Well, like, what of these moments in wrestling so far have been truly memorable for you? And where do you see yourself kind of going next? I would say our most memorable match. What is that? <laughs> that is the death hound that at any moment the death hound. strike. <laughs> Sorry, continue. He has a beach wolf in there somewhere. Somewhere around here. 
we had a match against the Briscoes in 2021, I believe, that really kicked things into gear for us. And I still, still one of our favorite matches. But as far as what's in our future, I only see two things, Aubrey. Big delts and gold belts. Tell them to Ooh, We want to tickle that nickel. We want to feel the steel. We want to hold the gold in the Outrunners. Truth Magnum, Turbo Floyd. We're going to be the Fonz with the bronze. Very cool. Oh, yeah. uh, uh. Hang on, I got a phone call. <laughs> Go ahead, take that, please. Hello? No, I'm on the show. Yes, unrestricted. He's taking a phone call. It is not restricted. Listen, I'm not going to take any more crap. No, you tell you and your stupid friends, if you ever want to talk crap about the Outrunners again, you could take a height. All right, I'll talk to you later. I love you too, Grandma. Bye. <laughs> Sorry about that. It was an incredible cell phone. Uh, amazing technology there. It's, yeah. We're in a whole new age. We want a match. We're making big money now. A bit more now we're that we're making uh, winning matches. I could buy any cell phone I wanted like that. Well, just one. That's true. You guys had your your longest winning streak recently. Uh, what? How did you go about celebrating that? If you ask me, it still continues, and the celebration still continues. We didn't get pinned in the mm-hmm. gauntlet. No, that was up to somebody else. The outrunners didn't take the pin. The undefeated streak still continues. Runner Nation has not stopped partying since that night in Chicago. That's true. Uh, well, the question still stands. Celebration. How did, how did it go? Well, the first thing we did, we hit the, the strip mall right outside of Miami. We got fitted up with that winner's purse money. Yeah. I got a brand new Kawasaki Yamaha jet ski. I got it well waxed and we hit the waves. Yep. And I bought a cell phone. I went out. I found the best car I could find a 1985 Lamborghini Countach white. I rented Ooh. it for the day. I took a, a lap around the city, returned it, got my deposit back. And now here we are. We're still having a real good time. Absolutely love it. <laughs> you know what, though? Hmm. What? We, 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 we're going to take this uh, back to break. But when we come back, I've got some trivia for you guys. Ooh. We're going to play a bit of a quiz Ooh. game. Okay. A couple of brain busters, huh? Oh, yeah. When we come back, we're going to test the true knowledge of the Outrunners right here when AEW Unrestricted continues. AEW Unrestricted. It's Aubrey Edwards. It's Will Washington. And we are here with the Outrunners. The youngest men alive. But how young truly? Because we're going to ask them a series of pop culture questions that only someone as truly electrified as the Outrunners would know. Okay. Okay. Bring it on. All right. I'm going to start with uh, the very popular movie, Back to the Future. (laughs) In Back to the Future. And by the way, either one of you can answer. But uh, you're free with the, uh, the best tag in the business. Tag out if you feel you don't have it. All right. In Back to the Future. What speed did the DeLorean need to hit in order to time travel? That's easy. 88 miles per hour. That's right. That is correct. Ooh, he's got it. And if you're real nasty, roads, well, we're going, we don't need roads. Ooh. We'll take a jet ski. Love it. All right. Which video game loving hero loves saving princesses, Mario or Zelda? That's a trick question because I think they both yeah. like saving princesses. Nice try. That is a trick question because Zelda's actually the princess. You're right. But <laughs> the answer would be Mario. That's fair. Okay. We'll allow it. Now I'm pissed off. Yeah. You tricked me. Oh, no. The glasses came off. And now this game is real. Let's go, Will. Bring them on. All right. What oh was God. E.T.'s favorite Earth snack? Oh. Come on, come on. Everybody knows E.T. loves Reese's uh, Pieces. Ding, ding. That is correct. I've never actually seen E.T. Well, you're missing out on a film masterpiece by Steven Spielberg. I'll go ahead and admit I've never seen it either. Turbo, we need to fix this stat. I don't know what you're doing tonight, but I think I have an idea. Outrunner movie night? Yeah, I think so. 
Because Outrunner movie night is just you guys at the gym, but you've got a movie on in the background instead of sweet 80s tunes. I'll bring my projector and we'll uh, we'll air it up onto the wall for everyone to enjoy. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Finish the popular 80s slogan. Where's the blank? <laughs> I think you're looking right at it. Oh, God. Where's the beef, Will Washington? I think I know where exactly where it is. The beef is right here, Will Washington. And that's beef. And give me the beef, boys, and free my soul. I'm gonna get lost in this dude's arm and drift away. <laughs> oh, I need you to take the next question. Oh, my God. All right. Oh, um, if you're stuck in a crisis in the 80s, who are you going to call? <laughs> well, if that crisis involves the supernatural, Aubrey. Number one, I'm calling Truth Magnum. Number two, I'll call the Ghostbusters. We're calling the Ghostbusters. I know there's a lot of fitness gurus, and I'm sure you guys have followed sort of all of them over the course of the 80s. Um, but what fitness guru told us to feel the burn? That would be, is it the late, great Richard Simmons? He's one of them. He tells us to feel the burn? Okay. No, there was not, but there's only one that told us to feel the burn. Only one? Last yes. Time. Now, I'll fast forward you to the 90s for a hint. Okay. She had workout tapes, but she had no motor in the back of her Honda. Does that mean she's missing a butt? That is what that means, uh, but... <laughs> Excellent context clues there, Turbo. All right. Sir Mix a lot. Baby got butt cheeks. I mean, that's mm. He said he he's referencing her in that said song. The answer was Jane Fonda. Jane Fonda. <laughs> Jane Fonda. <laughs> I said we said it at the same time if I didn't say it slightly before you. Because Fonda ain't got a motor in the back of her Honda. My Anaconda. <clears throat> My they, Anaconda. Oh, truth, Matt, I'm just dipped. I'm still here. Okay, good. Oh, All right. There he is. Moving on from trivia, because I have a very important question that I personally need answered. Uh, I need to know your hair care routine for both your hair, glorious, glorious blonde hair, but also how you guys keep your mustaches so pristine. Well, again, uh, this is a lot of all natural. Yeah, lines right here. It just grows that way, which is pretty cool. Definitely a natural color. Yeah, you know, it's, a lot of people ask me how does how is it lighter up here and darker down here, and I just say I was born that way because that is the truth. And being truth magnum, I can't tell a lie. Can't tell a lie. Me, I've got a team of about fourteen people that come in. They will cut my hair. They kind of trim it. I say. Run it real high up the front, kind of thin it in the back, and let, let's let roll. And that's the way that it is. As far as my mustache goes, I just trim it. Just trim it. Yeah. Are you more of a scissors guy or a clippers guy? Clippers. I'm not allowed to have scissors. Yeah. Those belong to another tag team. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> do, do you have a preferred uh, clipper? Hedge. <laughs> Walked right into it, and that's so great. <sighs> it's a good. Oh my god! Yeah, it's like I didn't see that coming, but if, how could I have not? All right, I, I want to talk about uh, theme music here. The man yes. who made a monster. Yes. By Dance with the Dead. Yes. How did this come to be? The Outrunners' favorite band. It actually came to me in a dream once. <laughs> my my buddy, uh, who will remain nameless, he sent me a text message, and he said, "Hey." I just you can get text messages on that phone. Yeah, it comes in Morse code. It's got buttons, bruh. Anyway. You got a T9 there. I T9, for sure. I'm a big T9er. Love T9. But it came to me in a dream. My friend texted me and he said, hey, I just saw this really cool indie band. You guys should check them out. Uh, here's a song of theirs. It would be perfect for your guys' intro music. And he I heard it. I heard that big thump. Quickly became the Outrunner's favorite band. Dance with the Dead. We used it on the Indies for many years before we got to AEW. We just messaged a guy and said, hey, we'd love to use your music on TV every week. And he said, I don't care. Do it. And here we are. And then, hey, Uncle Tony, we got it all here for you. We served it on a silver platter, and he got it done. 
and got it done. I mean, what musical artist would not want to be associated with this amazing tag team right here? <sighs> That's what I'm telling you. I mean, I reached out to Phil Collins. We reached out to Elton John. Oh. George Michael would, didn't, wouldn't, wouldn't return oh. our calls. Yeah, wouldn't return our calls. What a jerk. There's probably a reason for that, but that's all right. <laughs> I don't know. Reached out to all these different people. They all told us to go uh, fly a kite, if, uh, uh. if I can say it so politely. Yeah. They're, they're lost. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of music, Truth Magnum, you are a yacht rock enthusiast, oh, yeah. according to your Twitter bio. Yeah. Do you have any fave yacht rock, a group? Uh, that maybe gets you pumped and going. Someone that you would maybe recommend to someone who's interested in listening to more yacht rock. My pre-match ritual is I get my headphones on, I find a private corner, and I start blasting the Michael McDonald. Oh yeah, I will listen to that man for hours and hours. And as a a true story, the only kind I tell, I saw Michael McDonald at the Louisville Palace years ago, and he this man had the flu, and he told us all at the beginning. Oh, wow. In between chorus lines, he was coughing, sneezing, sweating profusely, but he had all the people, myself included, dancing in the aisles, and I love that man. And whenever I need, whenever I'm going to battle, I need to hear a little Michael Mick in my headphones. Absolutely. I need to add some Michael McDonald to my my playlist right now because that's going to be on my gym gym playlist. I just there's one thing I'm taking away from it. It's don't use SPF <laughs> and definitely no. listen to Michael McDonald. <laughs> Michael McDonald. Let's see Outrunner Lifestyle. Outrunner Lifestyle. I, I am so absolutely impressed with you guys and just the organic growth that you have had in front of the AEW crowd. Like they are 100% behind this jacked, tan, vascular tag team. Clearly, I'm looking at future champions. Thank you guys so much for being on today. This was awesome. Thank you, Aubrey. I'm Really glad you got a chance to see us. Thank you so much for having us. Yes, up close and personal. This was wonderful. You can follow this podcast, AEW Unrestricted, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. Please leave us a rating, review, subscribe. And this episode especially, check out the video episodes on YouTube. Just search AEW Unrestricted. We, I needed to come prepared with sunglasses. There's just too much, too much going on here. It's beautiful. It's blinding. So much majesty. There, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you doing that. <laughs> Absolutely. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Never miss a new episode and catch all of the latest AEW shows on the go when you download the TNT and TBS apps from the App Store and Google Play. Then sign up for a weekly newsletter at tntdrama.com slash elite fleet to get updates on upcoming shows, live events, sweepstakes, merchandise, and more. AEW Dynamite on TBS, Wednesdays, yes. 8 p.m. You got Rampage, TNT, Friday nights, 10 p.m. You got Collision, live, Saturday night, 8, 7 central on TNT. Ring of Honor streaming every Thursday on Honor Club. I am Aubrey Edwards, Ooh. and that's Will Washington. Thank you so much for listening to AEW Unrestricted. See ya. Come on, throw your hands up, let me see you. Unrestricted. Got the house now. Turn it.